When you think about the future of our country, what comes to mind? Well, for me, I think about our nation's youth. Seriously, creating an environment where every child can develop to their fullest potential. And so it is in today's magazine. We look at two programs that are doing just that, helping young people to grow. Plus, a special treat for coffee lovers. You won't want to miss a drop. I'm Theodore Henry. We get started with this message. Parents, how do you think your children feel when they are beaten? I feel so sad when my mother beats me. It makes me feel so angry. I feel embarrassed and I feel like I just don't care. It has been proven that coercive parenting is directly linked to the aggression your children are displaying in schools. The National Parenting Support Commission is imploring you, parents, rethink your actions, stop beating your children. A message from the National Parenting Support Commission in collaboration with Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for Improved Safety and Security in Schools. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, January 31. The state of public emergency in St. James has been extended for another 90 days. Yesterday's passage of the Emergency Powers Continuance Resolution in the House of Representatives also means the Emergency Powers Regulations will remain in effect until May 2. In tabling the resolution, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the security forces would continue to exercise powers to detain, search, seize and control public gatherings and the movement of people. These additional powers allow the security forces through a suite of operations to bring the high levels of violence and murders under control and also to prevent the movement of weapons. Prime Minister Holness says the extension is necessary to capitalize on the successes being made under the operation. So far, 51 persons have been arrested and charged for various offenses. Ten firearms and several rounds of ammunition have also been recovered. The Prime Minister says special attention will be paid to murders, scamming, extortion, illegal importation of guns, drugs and uncustomed goods. And we have mobilized all law enforcement agencies to deal with that. The strategy can't be simply to focus on the street level criminals. That there is high level facilitation, particularly when you start to talk about the economic crimes. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister is assuring the diaspora, regional and international partners that the country is not in a state of chaos. He says the steps being taken by the government is in support of law and order. We have taken a deliberate, strategic, instrumental, well-planned action to ensure that law and order and the rule of law is preserved. National Security Minister Robert Montague shared a similar sentiment while speaking with JIS News. St. James is open for business, St. James is safe, and we are encouraging persons both here in Jamaica and overseas to come on down and pay us a visit because it is the new norm to feel secure in tourist destination, and there is no place, absolutely no place, as beautiful as Montego Bay. Government has delivered on its promise to provide additional resources to preserve the human rights of persons detained under the state of public emergency in St. James. The Department of Correctional Services has made 50 spaces available at the Horizon Remand Center to accommodate detainees. Minister of National Security Robert Montague says an additional 309 spaces will be made available at a newly developed wing at the Tamron Farm Correctional Center. It is the intention of this government that whether you're an inmate or you're a detainee, there are certain minimum standards that we must treat each other with as human beings, and we are determined so to do. Minister Montague was speaking at Friday's passing out ceremony for 67 correctional officers at the Carl Rattray Staff College for Human Resource Development and Training in St. Anne. 
He also announced the start of a program to provide proper waiting areas to accommodate visitors of inmates in the island's correctional institutions. A waiting area has been completed at the Richmond Correctional Center and work has started on one at Tamarind Farm. The ministry has also rehabilitated the Tower Street waiting area. We must show respect to our fellow Jamaicans because we must not punish the family. We must only punish the one that fell afoul of the law. While at the passing out ceremony, Minister Montague also announced that amendments are being made to the Corrections Act. The amendments are geared at addressing certain deficiencies in the administration of rehabilitation and reintegration services. It's hoped that the amendments will also continue the drive to reduce the repeat offender rate, which has moved from 47 to 42 percent. One of the things I am desirous of seeing in the new Commission Act is to make certain electronic devices illegal within prisons. And is also to establish proper communication systems to allow inmates to make phone calls and families to be able to communicate with them. We live in the modern world. We must treat people with dignity. The amendment of the Corrections Act will see to the institution of remedial learning for inmates who cannot read or write. Minister Montague also expressed the hope that persons convicted of pradial larceny will be sent to Tamarind Farm or Richmond Correctional Centers so they can experience farming. The Ministry of National Security has meanwhile signaled its intent to boost the mobility of the Jamaica Constabulary Force with the procurement of motorcycles. Portfolio Minister Robert Montague says 53 600cc motorcycles will be handed over to the Police Forces Traffic Division in February. We will also be taking possession of 90 trail bikes, Your Worship. And they are specifically for pre larceny and for cell phone recovery. So it is my belief that when we hand them to the Commissioner, at least three or four bikes will go to each division. The Minister was speaking Tuesday as he handed over six motor vehicles to the St. Thomas Police. 430 motor vehicles were purchased for the force last year. Minister Montague says the vehicles have been fitted with tracking devices and other monitoring and management systems. In addition, the system also tells us at any time that car is moving, what speed you're driving at. And it also tells you when the car is up for service. Because we have to now begin to practice preventative maintenance. And finally, the Ministry of National Security has pledged $1 million to the Carl Rattray Staff College of the Department of Correctional Services. The donation will see to the purchase of equipment to establish a gym at the institution. National Security Minister Robert Montague says this is part of the ministry's five-pillar crime-fighting strategy. He says work is also being done to ensure that all courses offered by the Carl Ratcher Staff College are accredited by the University Council of Jamaica. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Finger licking jerk chicken, health fish and bami. We we'll run down yam and banana, roast bread fruit, sweet potato pudding. Mmm, mmm, Jamaica food sweet. So let's make a pledge to use more local produce and less foreign goods. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, that special blend that excites palates all over the world. This wonderful brew is being recognized in March with its own festival. Here are the details. Coffee is Jamaica's most famous bean. There's no question about that. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee makes one of the world's best brews. That's the positive reputation the tourism ministry seeks to capitalize on as the country hosts the inaugural Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival, March 23 to 25 at Newcastle, in the cool hills of the country's highest peak. We the members of the Jamaica Coffee Exporters Association are extremely delighted to endorse and be a part of this year's staging 
of the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival in association with the Tourism Linkage Council, the Tourism and the Agricultural Ministries. After crude oil, coffee is the most sought after commodity in the world. Its export is estimated at 20 billion US dollars, mostly consumed by industrialized countries such as Japan and the United Kingdom. Coffee is Jamaica's gold. It is a major income earner for the country, with about 7,000 coffee farmers across the island. Based on recent reports from the Coffee Industry Board, the coffee industry generates last year some 17 million US dollars in export. The value chain of the Jamaican coffee industry starts from the coffee fields in rural communities to our factories, some in rural communities and others in industrial zones, to our hotels, supermarkets, in bond shops, in resort areas, and of course, to the world, namely Japan, United States, Europe, China, Taiwan, just to name a few countries. We're exploring various options for the products and we would like to expand the coffee industry such that the pharmaceutical industry, the beauty and cosmetic sector and gastronomy will look to the hills or hills in East Rural as the source for sustenance. Now that you're reminded of the value and potency of the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee, let's find out what will be the features of the festival. This signature festival will be a three-day celebration of all things coffee, with lots of sampling, food demonstrations, workshops, exhibitors' booths, life entertainment, a barista competition, and the opportunity to purchase high quality coffee and other products. It is definitely a must to be there event for coffee lovers and aficionados. The festival will also bring together local and international coffee connoisseurs, coffee suppliers, foodies and other interested parties from local, regional and international markets, including Cayman, Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados, as well as the UK, the USA, Europe, and Canada. Our intention is to build out a series of experiences around one of our most iconic brands. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival, another notch in promoting the country as a gastronomy destination. for and included don't beat me up don't belittle me and please don't molest me i am under 13 i should not be working for a living that is child labor it is illegal start leaving me alone i am too young to provide for myself i need your guidance protect our nation's children they have rights too to learn more about children's rights call or visit the offices of the Child Development Agency. One way to empower young people is to make them feel good about themselves, saying kind words and doing deeds that make them feel loved and supported as if they can be and do anything that they want. Everyone should be given this opportunity, even if they've made mistakes. Right now, let's see how the Ministry of National Security is providing such support for adolescents in the correctional system. In June 2017, the Ministry of National Security launched the We Transform program under the supervision of the Department of Correctional Services. Private and nonprofit organizations, as well as other government ministries, have come on board to support the transformation and rehabilitation of some of our nation's youth. The target group consists of children ages 12 to 17 years who are on remand or serving sentences in four of the island's juvenile correctional facilities. 
There are two phases to the program, with four pillars in phase one. Your affirmation, we had three. It was? Somebody give me the first one again. I am love. What's the second one? I'm powerful. I'm powerful. And the third one was? The facilities offer the wards a wide variety of vocational skills in addition to their academics through innovative training. And some skills are unique to the facility, such as wig styling at South Camp and aquaponics at Metcalf. What we are now moving to is a place where this We Transform program can achieve its purpose of giving these young persons an opportunity to successfully reintegrate when they leave here. From all walks of life, influential Jamaicans have stepped up to be role models in the lives of these young boys and girls. This is very important for us to get involved, not just see them as somebody in a corner and some bad picnic, but you know, they can be changed. So I'm happy you know, to be a part of that. If I can inspire or motivate these young ladies to just be better, do better, and just believe in themselves, then I'm already doing something good enough for them. Over 50 ambassadors and mentors will work with the children from all four facilities to provide personal and career development, as well as job opportunities. We like to give thanks to your stickers in our way, can the hurdles teach you jump? And then I say, if everything did smooth every day, we wouldn't know we could overcome. Say, if it don't kill we, oh, I surely know it's gonna be the way. Hey, we transform, getting stronger. On this is the occasion of the We Transform Competition and Expo, we meet to affirm greatness within our children, and in particular, children in juvenile correctional centers. The wards will showcase the fruits of their labor fostered in Pillar 1, as well as other talents and performances. And at the end of the event, the centers were awarded on various categories and overall excellence. Healthy lifestyle practices are provided through life skills training and health fairs for both wards and staff. The health fairs ensure that the children have access to crucial services and various health screening tests. Confidence, self-esteem and positive mental attitudes are also encouraged through art expression. Art therapy is a um, psychological discipline that, or a mental health profession that combines both art and psychology. And you use art, especially with persons who have difficulty maybe talking about their emotions or coping with a situation or have behavioral problems. There are plans to expand the initiative to parents and training staff of the institutions in phase two of the program. You know, the first thing we talk about certifying the students, the teachers themselves mm -hmm. have to be certified to actually execute um, that whole program. The We Transform program aims to empower and rehabilitate the wards by promoting a sense of purpose and hope, providing them with the skills to succeed after leaving correctional facilities. Nowadays, no know for school and pick me. Then school and pick me and tell them all oh, they ugly, that fit tough. Tell them all oh, they look like they ugly papa, that fit tough. Tell them all oh, they eat dry like a coconut brush, that fit tough. Tell them all oh, they now come out to nothing good, that fit tough. Yes, children are precious gifts from God and are our heritage. Parents, guardians, stop abusing them. Speak life and healing into every child's life and let us play a positive role in shaping and molding the next generation. One initiative that's helping youth from poor socioeconomic backgrounds is the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP. Here's a story of four individuals whose lives have been changed through the CSJP. They don't know. I am Charmaine Doyle Clark and I am a records clerk. Daniel Flanure and I am a training assistant. Serena Brown and I am a maintenance technician. 
I am Pierce Amos and I'm a financial transaction processor. Men and women who have been changed through the Citizen Security and Justice Program CSJP, which uses a multi-sectoral approach to crime fighting. The program, which began in 2001 under the Ministry of National Security, has made job skills and entrepreneurship training more accessible for at-risk youth through their labor market attachment and employability program. Regular corporate Jamaica might not be so willing to embrace our youngsters because of certain negative stigmas that are attached to them. However, what the CSJP does, we take them through a suite of positive engagements, trainings, internships to get them ready for the workforce. Since 2010, over 18,000 youngsters have benefited from this component, whether it be from vocational skills training, employment internships, job placements, even tuition support. These four are among the many who have benefited tremendously from the Employment Internship Program, EIP. A lot of these persons were unemployable. They didn't have the necessary communication skills. For example, how they answered the telephone was inappropriate. The dressing was also inappropriate. A lot of them were shy and uh, afraid to come out and speak openly. And I realized after the exposure, be it through the workshops or the internship program, they became more confident in going out there and meeting people and doing their job. Well, I received training in secretarial um, management and also this so far it has helped me to become more dependable, more organized, more focused and it also helped me to you know, further my education to be a better worker in the Ministry of National Security. I would like to say to CSJP thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity of becoming a young man that I never was two years ago and learning how to become a man, learning how to accept society as it is and helping me to understand what the work world feels like. Yeah, I'm very, very grateful and thankful for the CSJP program because if it wasn't for this, if it wasn't for it, I, I don't think I would, I would be able to be in a setting like this. Some of the things that, that he has done, like for example, as a, tra as a training section, we deal with all training for the staff at Staten. And one part of that is overseas training. And so we have a lot of forms to fill out. But he has also looked at forms that we have had and have come to me with ideas. And he have changed the form and upgraded the form. I did not ask him to do that. He couldn't ask a better worker. <laughs> you have the skill, but you don't have any experience. So coming here as an intern, Working for about eight months was great because I've learned to do every single thing. And I attached myself, I was attached to each um, trademan, and that's how I began to learn all the different trade areas here at the British High Commission. Working with Serene is, is very interesting because um, Serene don't just do electrical here. Serene is on everything. So if painting is going on, Serene is, is on painting. Carpenter work is going on, he's on carpentry. And if I should go back to, to choosing an institution, I'd probably look for CSJP to put me on that path. So youths who don't have a job, youths who may have a skill but are unemployed, CSJP is that organization that seek out to reach out to that individual, helping them to know that, hey, I can allow you to get some amount of apprenticeship. I don't think I could have done it without God and CSJP. We found that youngsters who have benefited from our program have been also appreciative of what the CSJP has done for them. Many of them have said that CSJP has literally saved their lives. So we know that what we have at the CSJP is quite a robust, quite a comprehensive and a transformational program. For more information on the work of the Citizen Security and Justice Program, call 906-9644-7860338-9 or 979-2597. You may also visit their website at csjp.gov.jm or follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Success is my destination. The Citizen Security and Justice Program, transforming lives through social intervention.
An effective way of really getting to know your child is to listen when they speak. Try to carve out some quality time to just sit or stand and hear what your child has to say. This way you can find out what's happening in your little one's lives and will be better able to detect situations or persons that they are not comfortable with, as well as find out the areas where they may need help. Opening the lines of communication with children make them feel supported. And as a parent, you'll be better able to provide guidance and raise individuals who are well-equipped to help Jamaica become the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. That's all we have for you for this edition of Jamaica Magazine. We want to know what you thought of the show, so send us an email or drop us a line on any of our social media pages. Also, visit our YouTube channel and our website to watch this and any other editions at your own leisure. I'm Theodore Henry, and on behalf of the producer and the entire production crew, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.